Okay, so today we're going to start the new section, but we did have a question about what's it mean for from our homework for part C for 13 where it says find it algebraically. And so basically we just take this equation that's up at the top. And I'm going to start with that. And it's the limit as x approaches negative 6 of g of x, which is this is e which is just this equation. x plus 6 over x squared plus 4x minus 12. So anytime it says to solve these algebraically, it means that we're not going to graph it or anything, because that was part A and B basically. So now it says there's something that we can do with this to make it uh, in a simpler form. And so what I would try to do, just about every time that it says to solve it algebraically, is see if there's something you can factor. I can't factor anything in the top because it's just x plus 6. But if I try to factor the bottom out, is there any uh, thing I can do to factor that? Okay, if I try to put my uh, negative 6 directly into the problem, it gives me a 0 on top, which is good. But on the bottom, if I do negative 6 squared, it gives me 36. And then 4 times negative 6 gives me negative 24 minus 12. So that's going to give me a 0 in the denominator, which is going to mean I can't solve it. So what we usually do is try to factor it out. So I need to know what multiplies to give me negative 12 and adds to give me 4. So if I set up two factors, the things that multiply to give me negative 12 would be negative 2 and 6. If I add those two together, that gives me 4. So it tells me that I'm on the right track x plus 6 and x minus 2. That's how we would factor out x plus 4, x minus 12. Now because of this, when I look at this, my numerator is the same as part of the denominator. So those cancel each other out. And I'm left with 1 over x minus 2. Now I can plug my limit in to solve that. So if the limit is x approaches negative 6, 1 over x minus 2. Now I can plug my negative 6 in, and it's not going to give me a 0 on the denominator. So that's how I can find an algebraic. So now we're going to move on to uh, 2.2, which is calculating, I'm going to try that again, calculating limits using limit laws. And there will be a lot of writing in the beginning of this section. So first, this test says right away, if L, M, and C, and K are real numbers, and then the limit is X approaches C of F of X equals to L, and the limit is X approaches C of G of X equals M, then now we have our limit loss. So the first one is the sum rule. This says that if I'm, I, so basically I had two functions here, f of x and g of x. And it says I took the limit of f of x and got l. And I took the limit of g of x and got m. 
then if I add those two functions together, then the limit of those two functions combined is just their limits combined, L and M. So it would just be L plus M giving me my new limit. And so, simply put, the limit of the sum of two functions is the sum of their limits. Likewise, we have the difference rule. And that says if I have the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus g of x, and that's equal to L minus F, or the limit of F of X minus the limit of G of X. So the limit of the difference of two functions is the difference of their limits. Likewise, we have the product rule. This says if I have the limit as X approaches C of F of X times G of X, then that's equal to the limit L times m. So the limit of a product of two functions is the product of their limits. Our fourth rule becomes the constant multiple. And this says that if I take a function f of x and multiply it by some k, where k is just a number, then the limit of f of x times k will be equal to the limit of the new function. So the limit of a constant times a function is the constant times the limit of a function. Next is the quotient rule. It says that the limit as x approaches a number of a function divided by another function is equal to the limit of the first function divided by the limit of the sex, second function and the only uh, constraint put on that is that the second limit, or the limit of g of x, cannot be equal to zero, because we can't divide by zero. So the limit of a quotient of two functions is the quotient of their limits, provided that the limit of the denominator is not zero. Lastly, it's a power rule. So if R and S are integers with no common factors, and then provided that it's a real number, I believe that's supposed to be S is a real number. And if S is even, we assume that L is greater than zero then the limit of a function raised to this power is equal to the limit of the function raised just to the power. So the limit of a rational power of a function is that power of the limit of the function, provided that the latter is a real number. So now we can start to look at what these rules actually mean. So it says, use the observations that the limit as x approaches c of k equals k, and the limit as x approaches c of x equals c, and the properties of limits to find the following limits. So I'll break down what that means. So C here is just a real number, okay, so it could be any number at all. And what this means is, based on what we've just learned, if I'm saying that as X approaches C, the limit as X approaches C of X equals C, 
then I know that if that equals C, then this would then be C to the third power. And so before we do that, we should really look at the sum rule. Come on. The sum rule said that I could take each part of this instead of taking the limit of the whole thing. I can take each part of it and break the limit up that way so that it's the limit as x approaches c of x to the third plus the limit as x approaches c of 4x squared minus the limit as x approaches c of 3. So then if I'm doing this, if I'm looking at the limit as x approaches c of x to the third, up here it tells me that that limit is c. The limit as x approaches c of x is c. So just knowing that, it means that this x is now going to turn into whatever number we would be choosing here. So this would be c to the third power. The second part of the constant multiple tells us that it would be 4 times c to the second. Then this third part, it's the limit as x approaches c of a constant. So that number just stays the same. So that would be minus 3. So that's my final answer.